Welcome guys. In today's tutorial, we're going to look at measures of position for ungrouped data. So without wasting much time, let's start. So these are the formulas we're going to be using. So for quartiles, this is a formula. For percentiles, this. For decile, this. Now what this actually means is, when a question asks you to find the first quartile, then you should say 1 over 4 times n plus 1. For second quartile, you say 2 over 4 times n plus 1. Then for third quartile, it should be 3 over 4 times n plus 1. n represents the number of values in the data set. So when you go to percentile, so when I ask you to find, let's say, 15 percentile, then it means 15 over 100 times n plus 1. For let's say 60th percentile, then it should be 60 over 100 times n plus 1. Let's also look at decimals. When I say second decimal, then it means 2 over 10 times n plus 1. When I say maybe 8th decimal, then it means 8 over 10 times n plus 1. Without wasting much time, let's take some questions and use the formula. Question 1 says, given 7, 13, 19, 8, 16, 5, and 11, find the first quartile, second quartile, and third quartile. So to do this, you first arrange the data in ascending order. So the first one is 5, followed by 7, followed by 8, followed by 11, 13, 16, and then 19. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay. Now, to find first quartile, let's say for Q1, first quartile should be 1 over 4 times or you put into bracket n plus 1. So our n is what? 7, isn't it? When you count. So 7 plus 1 is 8. 8 times 1 over 4 gives you what? 2. So you say second position. So how then do we locate the second position? So you come to the arranged data set. Then you count. 1, 2. So this is a second position value. Hence, the first quartile is 7. For second quartile, it should be 2 over 4 times n, which is 7, plus 1. So 7 plus 1 is 8. And 8 times 2 over 4 should give you what? 4. So we say fourth position. Okay. So how then do we locate the fourth position? You come back to the arranged data set. Count. 1. 2, 3, 4. So this is the fourth position value. So the second quartile is 11. The next for third quartile it should be 3 over 4 times 7 plus 1. So 7 plus 1 is 8. 8 times 3 over 4 should give you sixth position sit position so to locate a sit position we count one two three four five six so the sit position value is 16 hence the third quartile is what is 16 that is all but in case a question asks you to find interquartile range interquartile range the formula for interquartile range is third quartile minus first quartile. So all is third quartile, 16, minus all is first quartile, 7. So 16 minus 7 gives you 9. So 9 is the interquartile range for this particular question. Now, take a look at something. The position here is a whole number, second position. So you can easily count, right? The position here too is a whole number. The position here is a whole number. 
What about if you have a decimal? How do you count it? So, to be able to do that, let's look at, what about if you have a decimal? How do you count it? So, let's do that in the second question. So, question 2 says, Given 2, 5, 7, 8, 15, 17, 21, and 22, find Q1, Q2, and Q3. First quartile, second quartile, and third quartile. Now, when you look at this data set, it's been arranged. So there's no need rearranging it. Okay, there's no need for that. So we just go straight to the point. For first quartile, it should be what? 1 over 4 times n plus 1. So what is our n in this question? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So our n is 8. So we substitute n there. n plus 1. 8 plus 1. Now, 8 plus 1 gives you 9, isn't it? And 9 times 1 over 4 should give you 2.25. So that's 2.25 position. So, so to locate a 2.25 position, so we check for the second position first. The second position value is 5. That is 1, 2. Okay. So we write it 5 plus into bracket. Now, what is the remainder after taking the 2 out? What remains? It remains 0 0.25, isn't it? Like take away 2 from 2.25, you'll be left with 0 0.25. So that's 0 0.25, you write it down here, times. Now, you check the difference between the second position value and the next value. A difference. That's a 7 minus 5. That gives you 2. So you multiply the remainder here by the difference. And that gives you 0 0.25 times 2 is 0 0.5. When you add it to 5, you get 5.5. .5. So the first quartile is 5.5. Now, for second quartile, it will be 2 over 4 times n plus 1. And 2 over 4 times n plus 1 give you 4.5 position. So let's locate the 4.5 position. So to do that, we only check for the fourth position value. So we count 1, 2, 3, 4. So 8 is the fourth position value. So 8 plus the remainder will be 0 0.5 after taking 4 away from it. So you write the remainder 0 0.5 times the difference between the fourth value and the next value, the fourth value and the next, the difference between them will be 7. That's 8 and 15. 15 minus 8 is 7, so you multiply by the difference. So that gives you 0 0.5 times 7 is 3.5. So add 3.5 to 8, you get 11.5. So the second quartile is 11.5. First quarter was 5.5. So, for third quarter, that will be 3 over 4 times n plus 1. 8 plus 1 is 9. And 9 times 3 over 4 should give you 6.75. So 6.7 feet position. Now to locate the 6.75 position, we only check for the seat position. So let's count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So the seat position value is 17. So we write the 17 first, then plus to bracket the remainder 
after counting assists. What's the remainder? The remainder is 0 0.75. So we put 0 0.75 times the difference between the seat position value and the next value. So 21 minus 17 is what? 4. So substitute 4 here. So 4 times 0 0.75 is 3. And 3 plus 17 gives give you 20. So the third quarter is 20. So in case a question asks you to find the interquartile range, then interquartile range should be what? Third quartile minus first quartile. So the third quarter was 20. And the first quarter was what? 5.5. .5. So 20 minus 5.5 .5 should give you 14.5. So the intercotta range is 14.5. So now let's go to percentiles. Given 7, 13, 19, 8, 16, 5, and 11. Find the 25th percentile, 40th percentile, 50th percentile, and 75th percentile. So to do this, we arrange the data set in ascending order. So we have 5. 7, 8, 11, 13, 16, and 19. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So for 25th percentile, we say 25 over 100 times n plus 1. So 7 plus 1 is what? 8. And 8 times 25 over 100 should give you 2. So that's second position. That's second position. So to locate the second position, we count 1, 2. Hence the 25th percentile is 7. Or 40th percentile, we say 40 over 100 times n plus 1. So 7 plus 1 is 8. 8 times 40 over 100 give you 3.2 position. So to locate, you know, this is in decimal. So you're going to work this like what we did in example 2. So to do this, we first look for the third position. So one, two, three. The third position value is eight plus. What is the remainder after getting the third position value? The remainder is zero point two. So it says zero point two times the difference between the third position value and the next value. The difference is what? The difference is three. So we multiply by the difference three. So 0 0.2 times 3 is 0 0.6. Add it to 8, you get 8.6. So the 40th percentile is 8.6. Now for 50th percentile, that will be 50 over 100 times 7 plus 1. 7 plus 1 is 8 times 50 over 100. You know, 50 over 100 is 1 over 2 times 8. That is 4. It means fourth position. So to get a fourth position, you just count one, two, three, four. So the fourth position value is eleven. So P fifty is eleven. For the last one, for P seventy five, that would be seventy five over hundred times seven plus one. So 7 plus 1 is what? 8. And this gives you 3 over 4. 25 goes here 3 times and go here 4 times. So 3 over 4 times 8 is what? 6. So seat position. So let's locate the seat position value. We have 6. So the 75th percentile is 6. So that is it. So let's look at the desert. For desserts, we also arrange the values in ascending order. So we have 5, 
7, 8, 11, 13, 16, and 19. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So for second decimal, we say 2 over 10 times n plus 1. So our n is 7 plus 1. So 7 plus 1 is 8. And 8 times 2 over 10 should give us 1.6. So 1.6 position. So to locate this, this is in decimal. So we operate it like the example 2. So we look for the first position, 1. So we have the first position value is 5. So write that down. Plus. What is the remainder? The remainder is 0 0.6. So the remainder times the difference between the first position and the next position, which is 2. So 0 0.6 times 2 is what? 1.2. And 1.2 plus the 5 give you 6.2. So the second decimal is 6.2. For fifth decimal, it will be 5 over 10 times n plus 1. So 7 plus 1 is 8. And 8 times 5 over 10. You know, this goes here 1 and this 2. So you, so you have 4, which is 4th position. So to locate that, we can count 1, 2, 3, 4. So the 4th position value is 11. So 5th decimal is 11. So for seventh decimal, it will be seven divided by ten times n plus one. Our n is seven. Number of values in the data, which will give us seven plus one is eight, and eight times seven over ten should give us five point six. So five point six position. So to locate this, this is in decimal. Isn't it? 5.6. So we first locate the fifth position. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So the fifth position value is 13. So write a 13. But we add to it the remainder, which is 0 0.6, times the difference between the fifth position value and the next position, which is 3. So 0 0.6 times 3 give you what? 1.8. And 1.8 plus 13 is what? 14.8. So the seventh decimal is 14.8. So 